is a motion on accelerated passage for the Housing Amendment Bill. Will the clerk please read the motion. That the Housing Amendment Bill proceed under the accelerated passage procedure. I think if members could just take their ease for a few moments. Ah, the Minister. Good. I call the Minister for Communities, Mrs Deidre Hardy. Thank you. I beg to move. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed that there should be no time limit on this debate. I call upon the Minister for Communities to open the debate on the motion. Minister. Thanks very much and just thank you to everyone in the Chamber. I suppose I welcome this opportunity to address the Assembly today on this motion. And for the legislation, there are compelling grounds for the use of accelerated passage. And it's obviously not a decision that I take lightly, but I think it's necessary. This bill is necessary following the 2016 decision by ONS to classify registered housing associations locally to the public sector for the purposes of government uh, accounting. Similar decisions were made by ONS in relation to housing associations in the other jurisdictions. On the same day that the decision was announced, the executive agreed for the Department of Communities to bring forward proposals to achieve a reversal of the ONS decision. As required under Standing Order 42.4, I wish to explain why I am seeking accelerated passage and the consequences if it is not granted. I am asking for accelerated passage for this bill because of the financial implications if we cannot achieve a timely reversal of the ONS decision. The ONS decision means that the borrowing of registered housing associations counts as public sector borrowing and the department must provide cover for this borrowing. But to do so for registered housing associations would impact adversely on our current approach to building social homes in which the associations match fund the capital grant made by the department through their borrowing in the private sector. The loss of this approach would see the volume of social homes built each year reduced by almost 50%. The British Treasury have allowed a derogation in relation to accounting impacts of the ONS uh, decision, but this is contingent on our doing what is necessary and as quickly as possible to facilitate a reversal of the ONS decision. The derogation has already lasted a year longer here than it was in both Scotland and Wales, and whilst it has been renewed for 2020 to 2021, it is highly unlikely that the Treasury will extend this any further. More urgently with the classification to the public sector, registered housing associations lost their eligibility to access financial transactions capital. This uh, government loan scheme has been used in the last few years to support increased home ownership through affordable housing programmes. The co-ownership scheme has supported over 2,000 uh, households into home ownership in the last two years. However, without FTC, the scheme would be forced to close to new applicants unless an alternative source of funding can be found. And in the last two years, the department has been able to find that funding with significant support from the Department of Finance. However, with the uncertain funding picture, um, it's not beneficial to co-ownership. My officials have estimated that to maintain co-ownership scheme at its current levels will require an additional capital funding of £3 million per month. This issue is unaffected by the derogation, which is purely about accounting practice. Without accelerated passage, there is a risk that the derogation will not be renewed in the 2021-2022, and the cost of maintaining the co-ownership scheme for the current financial year uh, will have been met by my department will see an additional cost of £36 million. Even with accelerated passage, there will, we will need to find the £3 million per month to maintain co-ownership scheme until the ONS decision can be reversed. And of course, the situation we will now find ourselves in brings an added urgency to the pressures of this bill. This additional funding is going to prove much more difficult uh, to find as a result of the COVID-19 public health emergency. 
and of course the economic benefits of reclassification of housing associations here will be a huge importance uh, due to the, uh, the need for recovery vehicles once we begin to emerge from the COVID-19 crisis. We need those benefits as soon as possible. In accordance with Standing Order 42.3, I appeared before the Committee for Communities on the 13th of May to explain the need for accelerated passage for the bill and to outline the consequences of it not being granted. I want to thank the Chair and the Committee for their recognition on the need to move this bill as quickly as possible and for their support in seeking Assembly approval for accelerated passage. Members will have the opportunity, obviously, to raise in detail at the second stage, and I look forward to the engagement. Thank you, Minister. I call the Chair of the Communities Committee, Ms Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. And as the Minister has said, the Committee was briefed by herself at its meeting on the 13th of May on the reasons why this bill was required to proceed under accelerated passage. Members recognised the urgent need for legislation so that the ONS would reverse its decision to, re or to classify registered housing associations as public sector. This classification has an effect on how money is borrowed, and without the current derogation, it would be classified as public sec sector borrowing. This would then impact on the budget for building social houses, something that we can ill afford to happen at this time when our housing waiting lists are so high. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, we also heard from the Minister and officials that whilst the Treasury extended the derogation from the ONS decision until March of next year, this was dependent on legislation being brought forward as quickly as possible to reverse the ONS decision. The Minister made the Committee aware that the Treasury has informed the Department it is highly unlikely that another derogation will be granted. The Committee agreed that it was therefore imperative that we get this legislation through as quickly as possible. Another factor to be taken into account is the potential impact on the successful co-ownership scheme. The ONS classification meant that housing associations are no longer el eligible to access financial transactions capital, which is a government loan scheme. As a result of this, the Department has been spending £3 million per month to maintain the scheme. Whilst we all welcome the support from the Department for Co-ownership, that £3 million per month could be used to meet the many other challenging priorities. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, as I have already indicated, the Committee is supportive of the Bill being granted accelerated passage. However, this is not to say that members did not have questions about the Bill, but with your approval, I will address those in the second stage of the debate. However, it is imperative that this bill progresses through the House quickly, particularly as even after royal assent, it will take time for the ONS to reverse its decision. The committee was told that with a fair wind, this decision could be taken by September. The minister acknowledged at the committee meeting that it isn't her preferred way of handling legislation, and whilst committee members would also prefer the opportunity to scrutinise in greater detail, Members are supportive of the motion to allow accelerated passage. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Before I call the next speaker, um, if members wish to participate, if they could rise in their place or in some other way indicate to me, try and catch the speaker's eye. Uh, the next speaker is Ms. Sinead Dennis. <coughs> um, Mr. Principal, De Deputy Speaker, and I agree with the comments from the Minister and from the Chair of the Committee in terms of the the need for accelerated passage, you know, I know it's not the, um, the minister's preferred, preferred vehicle, um, but I think it has to be noted that the, the Communities Committee did accept the need for accelerated passage to reverse the ONS decision uh, to, reclassify, or sorry, to classify housing associations um, as public bodies. And we know that failure um, to reach its accelerated passage will have consequences, not least of all the, the financial implications. And as the Chair has alluded to, you know, it will draw a cost of £3 million per month just to keep the co-ownership scheme open to new applications uh, while the bill progresses. So I welcome the Minister's de minister de uh, determination regarding this issue, um, because, uh, as the Chair has said as well, it is very unlikely that the British Treasury would extend the current derogation for another year. So it's important, imperative that the bill passes through uh, this Assembly through the use of accelerated passage, and we support that. Mr. Mark H. Durkin. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. 
As social justice a spokesperson for the SDLP, a party whose very raison d'etre is the pursuit of social justice, I can't let today pass without commenting on recent and ongoing events across the Atlantic Ocean. I apologise, I missed the matter of day, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, but if you'd give me a wee bit of latitude, please. The murder of George Floyd, an unarmed and innocent black man by Minneapolis police officers, has shone a light once more on the injustice and intolerance that is still rife in this world, and we sadly are no strangers to it in this wee corner of it. We do, we do not condone the rioting or looting that many cities are now suffering, but we condemn 100% the institutional racism that has given rise to it. We stand in sympathy with George's family and friends and in solidarity with all those across the world who strive for a fair, just and equal society. We are motivated to do all that we can, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, as leaders here to eradicate injustice in our community. One area where injustice does remain here is in housing. Today, in 2020, thousands of families and individuals suffer homelessness and housing stress. We have a duty, statutory and moral, to provide homes for these people. And the legislation that we will debate today the Housing Amendment Bill, is an essential tool to enable us, through housing associations, to build and provide more social homes. Therefore, I want it firmly on the record that we support the essence of this bill. When the Minister came to committee to outline her intention to use accelerated passage to get the legislation through as quickly as possible, I, like other committee members, expressed regret that we won't be able to fully scrutinise such an important piece of legislation, but we ultimately acquiesced to the Minister's request. Over the weekend, however, I have given this a bit more thought. In order to ensure that ONS reclassification of housing associations is reversed and realise the huge social benefits that it will bring, as well as the significant financial benefit to the Executive, the legislation needs to be in place by the 31st of March 2021. That's the 31st of March 2021. Are we saying that it is beyond our ability, that it's even beyond our ambition, to get this bill through the normal legislative process by then? Consultation has previously been done on the right to buy elements within the bill, but then apparently disregarded. We as a committee have received a briefing from the Minister and her officials over the phone, and that is no fault of the Ministers or her officials or the committee, but we have not had a chance to get evidence from or question the sector. We have not even received an opinion from the Northern Ireland Housing Executive. The Minister, the Executive, has a job to legislate. We as committee members, we as MLAs, have a job to scrutinise. And this bill has aspects that certainly warrant further examination and consideration, and we'll touch on them as the debate moves into second stage. We need to get it right to maximise its benefit to the people that we are paid to represent. I don't want us to take the time to unpick the bill. I want us to take time to improve the bill. I apologise to my chair and fellow co committee members and to the Minister for not making this case more strongly at committee, but I do not think that we can use the COVID-19 crisis as cover for merely rubber stamping a far from perfect legislation. We were not here doing our job for three years, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Let us do it properly now, so we will not be supporting accelerated passage. Thank you. I call Mr Andy Allen. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. And has, as has been outlined by the Minister, indeed my committee colleagues, uh, the rationale and reason for the requirement of accelerated passage, and I'll not uh, rehearse those arguments. Um, social housing is, is indeed an essential necessity for many people across um, Northern Ireland, and many, unfortunately, don't have the ability to access social housing. Um, and any detrimental impact to the ability to build social housing would be totally catastrophic. 
So with that in mind, and indeed the mitigating circumstances, and, and I do believe COVID-19 does play a huge factor in this, in taking this bill back to ONS and going through the various different stages with them, we will be supporting accelerated passage. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Um, no other member has indicated to me uh, that they wish to speak at this stage. So before we proceed to the question, I would remind members that this motion requires cross-community support. The question is that the Housing Amendment Bill proceed under the accelerated passage procedure. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, if any. No. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, if any. No. Okay, clear the lobbies. The question will be put in three minutes. I would, I would remind members that we should continue to uphold social distancing and that members who have proxy voting arrangements in place should not come to the chamber. The House will divide. Order. Members will resume their seats, please. Before I put this question, order. Before I put this question, I would again remind those members present that, if possible, it would be preferable to avoid dividing the House. The question is that the Housing Amendment Bill proceed under the Accelerated Passage Procedure. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, if any. Aye. Do we have tellers? Order. Order. Tellers have been appointed as follows. The tellers for the ayes are Mr. Colin Gildernew and Mr. Jonathan Buckley. The tellers for the noes are Mr. Mark Durkin and Ms. Sinead McLaughlin. Before the Assembly divides, I want to remind you that as per Standing Order 112, the Assembly currently has proxy voting arrangements in place. Members who have authorised another member to vote on their behalf are not entitled to vote in person and should not, therefore, enter the lobbies. It is important that during any division, social distancing in the chamber continues to be observed. In order to facilitate this, I would ask the following. Any members in the chamber who are not due to vote in person should consider leaving the chamber until this division has concluded. Those members who wish to vote in the lobbies on the opposite side of the chamber to which they are sitting should leave the chamber via the nearest door and enter the relevant lobby via the rotunda. Those remaining members who are sitting closest to the lobby doors should enter the lobbies first, and any member who has voted may then wish to leave the chamber until this division has concluded. I remind members of the need to be patient at all times and to follow the instructions of the lobby clerks and to respect the need for social distancing. Clear the lobbies. The assembly will divide. Eyes to my right, nose to my left. Order. Order. Could I ask members to resume their seats, please? Ask the clerk to read the result. 83 members voted, of which 68 members voted aye, 81.9%. 37 nationalists voted, of which 26 voted aye. 70%, 70, pardon me, 70.3%. 36 unionists voted, of which 35 voted aye, 97.2%. 10 others voted, of which 7 voted aye, 70%. The motion is carried by cross community support. Thank you. So the question, the ayes have it, and the question that the Housing uh, Amendment Bill proceed under accelerated passage procedure has been approved by the Assembly. If I could ask members just to take their ease for a few seconds while we adjust the table and give the Minister time to come into the Chamber. Thank you.